The worst fear of any traveler is spending an entire trip surrounded by swarms of other tourists, feeling like you're having the same trip as everybody else. Today I'll be sharing some New York neighborhoods that are going to give you more local vibes and still have a ton of things to do. Use this guide to make your next trip here feel a little bit more authentic. Here we go. This first neighborhood is so close to the belly of the beast that is Times Square, and yet just far enough away where you won't be hounded by Disney characters, and it's Hell's Kitchen. Just a 10 minute walk from Times Square, I think the best reason to visit here is 9th Ave, which is one of the most underrated areas in the city to find good food. They have diverse offerings like Peruvian, Spanish, Venezuelan, so much more. And heck, they're even home to one of my favorite bars, Rudy's, where you can get a free hot dog with every beer. But I really love it because you can just walk around some of the blocks and find a little bit more of a relaxed vibe and even some brownstones that would give you Brooklyn vibes. Sometimes the best neighborhoods for savvy travelers are just outside of those crowded central areas. And you'll find more New York local options with fewer chains, no olive gardens, and much better prices. I also recommend searching this area for a pre or post Broadway meal. And if you haven't visited Schmackery's Cookies yet, you better hit them up. One of the best cookies I've ever tried living in New York. And just a note for everybody watching, I will have have links in the description to every single neighborhood mentioned if you want a more in-depth guide to them. I have yet to visit a single neighborhood anywhere on the planet that can match this one for affordability and diversity of food choices, and that's Jackson Heights, Queens, just 30 minutes from Midtown Manhattan on the 7 train, but it's like stamping your passport. You can sample anything from Paraguayan sandwiches to Tibetan momos, the only Bhutanese food truck in New York, and the best Mexican food you may just find on the east coast of the U.S. Jackson Heights is a foodie's paradise. And it's just starting to get attention from tourists. If you're a little hesitant about exploring without a local, my good friend Greg, who's a mainstay on the channel, offers food tours there. And many of my viewers have told me it was the highlight of their trip. I don't think you can really say you've been in New York unless you hit up some of these amazing immigrant-owned businesses for food. The Upper West side. Now this is a neighborhood that many of you may find yourselves in without really realizing it. It's home to the American Museum of Natural History and Central Park. But if you walk just a few blocks away, you've got a great neighborhood that was even home to the fictional characters from Seinfeld. There's so many iconic places to eat there, like Gray's Papaya, probably the most legendary hot dog shop in New York City, or Barney Greengrass, an old school Jewish deli that doesn't get anywhere near the attention it deserves. Anthony Bourdain was even a huge fan. Even just wandering the beautiful streets after visiting Central Park is worth it. And if you want to see a local park that gets way less attention than Central, head over to Riverside Park. One of the city's best bagels, as far as I'm concerned, is located near Columbia Absolute Bagels. And you are absolutely missing out if you don't visit the Upper West Side, which is truly one of the crown jewel neighborhoods of the city as far as I'm concerned. While most tourists cross the Brooklyn Bridge and stay in a small area of Dumbo, I encourage you to walk up the hill 10 minutes to Brooklyn Heights. For one, you've got million dollar views of Manhattan from the Brooklyn Bridge Promenade, which I think is one of Brooklyn's best kept secret viewpoints. Seriously, I could just sit there for hours. Speaking of million dollar views, you've got multi-million dollar brownstones galore, and I call this the most beautiful neighborhood in all of New York City. And while it's not really known as a foodie destination, there's enough interesting spots like Della Rocco's for you to spend some time there. If you want a little taste of brownstone Brooklyn, Brooklyn Heights is by far the best spot for a tourist to check out. Make sure to bring your camera. Many of my Chinese American friends tell me that the Chinatown in Flushing, Queens is the superior one. And while you can't knock Chinatown Manhattan's central location, if you're willing to trek out to Flushing, you'll be eating in an area that probably has the best Asian eats in the whole city. 
Chinese, Taiwanese, Korean, and more. It's also more local. I have visited eateries that don't even have English on the menu. So if you're in the mood for a food adventure, I highly recommend it. And check out our entire Chinatown series linked down in the description for even more specific pics of restaurants there. Few neighborhoods have the history and culture of Harlem in Upper Manhattan. I can't think of many places with better soul food in the city. If it's your first time in New York, definitely consider a walking tour. Free Tours by Foot has a great one that I've even taken years ago. I I think Harlem gets a lot of attention internationally, but it's overlooked by many locals. From beautiful brownstones on Strivers Row to lots of food options, it's a must visit. And if you're into jazz music, Harlem has some very famous spots that play well into the night. Another really popular activity is seeing a gospel choir live. This is a neighborhood any tourist needs to have on their radar. A lot of my younger viewers will flock to Williamsburg for its trendy nightlife and hipster scene, but I think Greenpoint, which is located just north, is equally as interesting. They've got Peter Pan Donuts, which may be the best donut I've ever tried in the city, and the waterfront views are nothing to sleep on. But perhaps my favorite thing about Greenpoint is the large contingent of Polish restaurants. I have never had a pierogi as good as the one that I ate at Pierogic. And Greenpoint has multiple Polish restaurants for you to check out. You could spend an entire day doing it. It's also got a lot of nightlife. And if you're looking for an alternative to all the crowds in Williamsburg, Greenpoint really checks off all the boxes as far as I'm concerned. We're gonna cheat a little bit with this one because even though it feels like it's in New York, Hoboken is actually right across the Hudson River in New Jersey. Just a 10 minute path ride from Greenwich Village, it's worth it alone for those jaw dropping views of the Manhattan skyline. But it's also worth exploring Frank Sinatra's hometown a little further. There's plenty of good dining and delis to choose from. And the little streets without the crowds of Manhattan make Hoboken feel a little bit like a tucked away oasis. Take it from somebody that grew up in Jersey, Hoboken is worth the trip. While Coney Island gets most of the tourist attention in South Brooklyn, I'm a much bigger fan of Brighton Beach, also known as Little Odessa. It's an interesting mix of immigrants from the former Soviet Union and the many local businesses they've established. If you're looking for pierogies and borscht, you've come to the right spot. How many neighborhoods of New York will you find random babushkas selling trinkets in the street? The boardwalk is also really neat to explore explore, to see live musicians, or just enjoy the ocean breeze off the Atlantic. And while I wouldn't call it a great beach for swimming, Brighton Beach packs a serious punch for the tourist who really wants to get to feel the cultural diversity that is New York. Make sure to stay tuned till the end. I'm gonna throw in one bonus neighborhood. Bushwick is one of New York's most unique neighborhoods to visit as a tourist. Its collection of graffiti in the Bushwick Collective and the surrounding blocks will give you a little taste of some local art. I also love all the vintage stores and thrift shops. My wife Adriana and I have gone shopping there in the past, just looking for some cool finds. It's also a real hub for nightlife. If you want to avoid the pretentious clubs in Manhattan, House of Yes, for example, is an incredible venue for any out-of-towner to check out. Or if you're looking for something more low-key, there's plenty of hip dive bars and a ton of spots to get some good craft beer. For my viewers under 30 or those just young at heart, Bushwick has so much to offer. One bonus for you all, Long Island City, Queens. If you get a chance to visit Long Island City, not to be confused with Long Island, the waterfront at Gantry Plaza is one of my favorites in the entire city. With unobstructed views of Manhattan and it's 75% less crowded than Dumbo, it's a fun way to spend an hour or two. And the neighborhood has some serious good eats if you know where to look. It's Queens' most expensive neighborhood for a reason and just a few minutes away 
from Manhattan. Now that you know how to avoid some areas that have a lot of tourists, you probably want to know how to get there without taking expensive taxis or Ubers. And in this video, we break down one of the most difficult challenges for newcomers to the city, taking the subway. Head to my New York City subway survival guide next. You'll be happy you did so.